Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I'm going to apologize in advance about the audio because I still don't have my microphone back from road yet. Pull up here. I'm supposed to be getting it back tomorrow. Am I overexposed? Yeah, let's bring this down. Here we go. Alright, so here's the story today. Um, you guys click on the title so you guys know what's coming here even though I haven't titled it yet. Right now I'm recording you my EM5 Mark III. Again, um, camera audio because broken microphones. And I recently made a couple changes in my kit. I'll go through those in the next couple videos, but here's one of them. I was up north and I was uh, going to this like cheesy dinosaur gardens place with my kid. And I had the 20 millimeter f1.7 lens on this camera. And I loved it because it was small and it was lightweight. But I realized in that moment, I really am a zoom shooter for those types of scenarios. I need the flexibility to go tight and go wide. Um, and so I thought to myself, well, I have the Olympus, the, Olympus, the Panasonic 12 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6. And if I'm going to go with a zoom as part of my kit, I want to do one of the, the better ones. So I ended up picking up this bad boy right here. Oh, why aren't you focusing, Olympus? What did I do wrong? Don't do this to me. This guy. Look at Tony Northrop would be really happy. Oh my gosh. I wonder, okay, I think I touched the focus button. This guy right here, there you go, much better. The Olympus 12 to 40 F2.8 Pro, I bought it used off B&H, got a decent deal on it, this thing's in like mint condition, I don't think the guy even used it, or if he did, he babied the crap out of it. And I thought about what, what can this lens bring in terms of video, and do I need my Leica 12 1.4 millimeter lens? Now by all, all uh, accounts, this lens has been fantastic for me. Uh, I love the bokeh I can get out of wide angle, which is difficult. We know as micro four third shooters, it's hard to get out of focus elements, or harder, I should say, on wide angles because of the crop factor. Um, and I think the image quality and color and contrast out of it's amazing. So I want to do two things. Again, just doing some generic tests of things I care about. I want to, well, first of all, check the color, check the contrast. I'm going to change nothing. I am in natural profile. The curves are all flat or you know linear. There's no S curves built in and I've changed nothing in, in the profile whatsoever. So check the color out. I'm gonna do a little bit of autofocus test uh, now that I've fixed that. And I'm gonna do a little walking test, just some stabilization. And then I'm gonna switch to this lens right here. Ah, there it goes. And I'm going to uh, do the same thing. So um, yeah, real quick, let's do uh, a little bit of autofocusing test and see what happens as I pop in and out of frame. Pretty smooth, pretty quick. Check the bokeh out, the blurriness. This wall is only like, I don't know, six feet behind me. Not much. Looks good, I think, right? Looks pretty good. Now let's go for a quick walk up and down the steps of my porch. Again, the stabilization on Olympus cameras is just phenomenal. I'm looking at myself in the screen so I can see what's going on. Looks amazing. Almost like gimbal-like. Let's turn around here. Went up and down steps. I'm walking. It's good content. I feel like the uh, camera conspiracy guy. Is this good content? All right, so what I'll do now, set the camera back down exactly where I was before I took off, go to the 12 to 40 F2.8 Pro, and uh, see how that is. Okay, I fixed it. We're good. All right, hold on. Are we there? Okay. All right, I am back. Um, uh, there we go, 12 millimeters. Are we good now? I think so, with the metering fix itself. All right, we're back around the 12 to 40 F2.8 Pro. Now, notice the depth of field. I can see a bit more on the brick lines back here that they are more in focus, right? So from 1.4 to 2.8. So I think that's what, two stops, which is pretty significant on micro four thirds. Um, also the color, again, I'll have to look at both of these, but the color, it's hard to tell in this flip screen, looks okay. Let's do a quick autofocus test and see how that is. Seems all right. Let's we'll see if we can give it the same product photography test. I think it's still tracking my face. Hold on one second. I should put the cap on, eh? Oh, there it goes. Okay. 
All right, so just quick glance at the screen. This seems to be a tiny bit faster on this 12 to 40 f2.8 lens. I don't know if it's because it doesn't have to hunt for as shallow of a depth of field, because um, 1.4 versus 2.8, or if the native Olympus lens talks to the camera better than the, than the Panasonic Leica lens. Okay, let's go for a quick walk, let's see how this is. Now, here's the thing I want to check out um, as I'm walking and the things behind me are a little bit more further away. Check the stabilization now, but also talk about the depth of field. Would this work in a vlogging scenario? Would you guys think this is too deep of a depth of field, or does it work okay? Going up the stairs, I can just see it looks pretty good. Um, stabilization looks fine. I'm going to have to take these back in post and look at them and uh, see if there's any difference. But what I'm trying to consider is, should I offset the cost of the 12 to 40 or actually make some money and sell this bad boy? It's pretty fast. Or should I keep both? My thought is for environmental portraits, this thing needs to stick around. Um, but I need to look at the footage a little bit. Um, because I think that 1.4 aperture it's pretty significant on micro four thirds so nonetheless guys i just wanted to uh, show you guys if you're thinking about using the zoom lens to do video what it'll look like and if you're looking at the 12 1.4 to uh get that shallower depth of field or a different look because it's the, the leica collaboration with you know, panasonic glass what you're getting with the differences so i'll come back to you in just a second with some thoughts all right um, okay, so I just looked at the test footage and I'm a total idiot. I I put it in the comments as you guys were watching that. I lent this camera out to my friend who had triplets and turned off face detect and moved the box over to the side and nothing was set up properly. I fixed it and so the box when I was focusing was in the middle of the screen. So everything I put there worked. Anything that was outside of it didn't. So I apologize about that but nonetheless you guys could still see the comparison between the two lenses in terms of color contrast, um, field of view, and focusing speed. My quick conclusion, the 12 to 428 focuses faster. The 1214 has a look that can't be reproduced. The 12 to 428 is a definitely a passable, great lens to do this, but the 1214 is unique. And so with that, my conclusion is I'm keeping the 1214 100%. Um, that lens is fantastic. But if I'm going on vacation one lens, this 12 to 428 probably is the one that's gonna come with me. Uh, as it looks like it's got the most versatility. So that's my conclusion, guys. I have some more kit stuff for you guys. I kind of left this botch video because it's kind of funny um, as I screwed it up. So I hope you guys aren't going to like comment and tear me up in the comment section below. But you still got the result out of it, what I was trying to show you guys. If you're considering getting the 1214 in addition to the zoom lens and you're going to use it for environmental portraits or for you want a shallower depth of field for a more blurry background on vlogging, I would say yes, do it. The lens is absolutely amazing. All right, have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.